We have breaking news on the vaccination effort in adolescents. The FDA has just approved the emergency use of the Pfizer vaccine for kids 12 to 15 years old. This vaccine has already been approved for teenagers as young as 16. The acting FDA commissioner called this a significant step in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The Colonial Pipeline runs from Texas all the way up to New Jersey. The Colonial Pipeline carries gas for cars. It carries diesel for trucks. It also carries jet fuel for airplanes. It's the largest fuel pipeline in the entire country. And right now, it's out of commission because of a ransomware attack that shut down the entire system. In a ransomware attack, the bad guys take your stuff. Generally, if you want your stuff back, you have to pay them. The FBI attributes this pipeline attack to a Russian criminal group known as DarkSide. In a statement, the hackers of DarkSide declare, we are apolitical. Our goal is to make money. Reportedly, the organization even has a code of conduct where it says not to attack hospitals or nonprofits or companies based in former Soviet countries. But it's a giant headache here in the United States. The Colonial Pipeline supplies nearly half of all the fuel on the East Coast. And yesterday, the company said some of its smaller pipelines remain operational, but its main line is still not working. The White House is coordinating closely with Colonial. President Biden says the attack is being investigated, and he wants to see Putin take at least some responsibility. My administration takes issue, uh, of this uh, takes this very seriously. We have efforts underway with the FBI and DOJ, Department of Justice, to disrupt and and, uh, prosecute ransomware criminals. And my administration will be pursuing a global effort of ransomware attacks by transnational criminals who often use global money laundering networks to carry them out. My administration is also committed to safeguarding our critical infrastructure, which much of which is privately owned and managed like Colonial. I'm going to be meeting with President Putin, and uh, so far there is no evidence based on from our intelligence people that Russia is involved, although there is evidence that the actors ransomware is in Russia. They have some responsibility to deal with this. Joining me now is Frank Vigluzzi. He's the former assistant director for FBI counterintelligence and an NBC News national security analyst and the host of the upcoming podcast, The Bureau with Frank Vigluzzi, which launches May the 25th. I am excited about that. Okay, Frank, I'm obsessed with this story because Mr. Robot is my favorite television show. And so cybersecurity uh, is something I'm a bit obsessed with. Can you explain a bit more about Dark Side? What does the U.S. know about this criminal group? Yeah, they haven't been around very long, but their members are very experienced, and we've attributed certain bad acts over the years to those members. So they've they've assembled down something called Dark Side. It's it's located somewhere in Eastern Europe, likely within Russia, and there lies the problem in terms of getting hands on these bad actors and, or getting anyone to care back in Russia and do something about it. So nations who give safe harbor to groups like this um, need to feel some pain and some repercussions. And you saw President Biden refer to that. But Zerlina, welcome to the future. We are experiencing a problem that will get worse until we do something about it. And I'd suggest doing two things about it. Just as after 9-11, when we realized that commercial aircraft could be used as weapons, what did we do? We hardened the cockpit doors of commercial airlines. We did something about it. It's time now for national standards to protect the cyber infrastructure of this country in key industries like oil and gas pipelines. We don't have standards here. And the the interesting thing about this group, DarkSight, is they didn't use some exotic, sophisticated, complex ransomware to do this. They use kind of old-fashioned encryption to say, we've locked down your stuff. If you want it back, you got to pay us. Mm-hmm. That's a bad thing because because they were able to do it against the, as you said, the largest oil and gas pipeline in the United States using simple stuff. We've got to get better at national standards. So, in terms of the vulnerabilities, this is this is really an area that I'm obsessed with. I'm not lying when I say that. I watched Mr. Robot, and then my brain did the thing where I like go down every rabbit hole of possible scenarios. 
I'm like, what if they hack the power grid? What if oil and uh, gas pipelines are hacked? What if, uh, you know, some, somebody does something to one of the major banks uh, that's trading on the stock market? It could be any one of these scenarios. So break down for us the major points of vulnerability in our nation's infrastructure as you see it currently. Yeah, we've already seen bad actors, including nation state sponsors. I'm talking about Iran, North Korea, Russia, all wave hello to us inside the systems of key infrastructures. What are those? Um, hydroelectric dams. That affects our water supply. Imagine waking up one morning and half the nation can't get its water. What if FAA air traffic control is taken down? What if 911 systems across the country are, are compromised and you can't call for help in a violent situation? How about not being able to use your credit card? How about not being able to pump gas because the electronics for gas station pumps has been taken down? All of that can be happening and much more unless we consider cybersecurity to be part of our infrastructure moving forward and federal money and national standards are applied to those infrastructures. So that's not really included in the package that's being considered right now. So what are the types of policies, if any, and funding that are needed in a future package to go directly to this issue? Because cybersecurity strangely, is just not one of the things that's in this major package. Yeah, so look, the simple things we've gotten right uh, over, over the years in terms of national uh, standards and even having an agency, na national uh, industry standards, national um, inf uh, infrastructure standards, technologies, you plug a, uh, your uh, hair dryer into the wall, it works, it fits that plug. Why? We have national standards. Same things for television, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's time now to institute those for computer security where it matters the most, including banking, uh, uh, utilities, all of that that we just take for granted every single day. It's time for, for that to become law and to beef up the resources in government organizations that police and enforce those standards. I haven't taken it for granted since I saw season one of Mr. Robot. <laughs> I, I literally have been obsessed with this specific topic ever since. I also worked on the 2016 campaign, so I put that tape over my camera early on because I, I knew it was Russia spying on me through my camera. So anyway, it's good to put tape over your camera. That's one small thing you can do while the government is trying to figure it out on the policy front. Frank Luzzi, thank you so much for being here tonight and for helping us understand this complex issue, but very, very critical. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.